prostitution is the world's oldest oppression. The world's oldest profession is pimping. The average age of entry into prostitution is 12 or 13 years old. And so this notion that women choose prostitution, that women choose to be sexually exploited to sell their bodies, is actually a myth that we work to expose as a myth. Because prostitution is actually a function of lack of choice. And that if women have real choices, if girls have real choices, do you really think they would choose to sell the most intimate part of themselves to any stranger that shows up? I was physically and mentally raped on a 24-hour basis, basically. Um, I had no control over my mind or my body. And uh, it was not my choice to give that up. It was taken from me. Um, I never was asked if I needed help. No one ever asked me if I had two black eyes and I'm limping. Still no one asked me if I needed help. Um, I think the closest thing I got to someone asking me for help was an outreach van coming up to me saying, do I need any condoms? That was the help that I got. And one of the reasons I feel very passionate about ending human trafficking is when you get to know the survivors and when you hear the survivors speak about what it has been like for them, specifically let's talk about sex trafficking, to have been used for the purposes of sexual exploitation you begin to understand that we are talking about the destruction of human beings that is almost total. Many women and girls who have been trafficked for the purposes of prostitution talk about it in ways that you sit there and wonder how in the world is this human being ever going to come back from that. And you begin to understand that the devastation that results from this form of abuse is total and anyone who survives it is it's nothing short of a miracle. The average age of entry into prostitution in New York City is 12 and 13 years old. Social workers have reported young men, young girls as, as young as eight years old walking the streets of New York City. This happens every single day. It's happening right now who are locked in car trunks or in basements, who have guns shoved in their mouths at the hint of quitting. Those innumerable girls for whom selling sex is not a choice, that these young women and girls, because I'm talking about 11 year olds, are not criminals. They are victims. I have a lack of will to look it in the face and call it what it is and have the courage to say, no, this is not going to happen anymore. In 1998, the law was passed in the Swedish parliament. Um, and this was actually the first time in the world that we had this kind of law that had a unique focus on the demand and not the supply when it comes to the prostitution. You have to put the guilt on the individual buying the sex and not the prostitute herself or himself. Prostitution, it's an obstacle for the goal of an equal society. And in Sweden we say that prostitution is regarded as an aspect of male violence against women and children. And um, it's officially acknowledged as the form of exploitation that constitutes a significant social problem, which is harm harm harmful not only to the individual prostitute, the woman, but also to the society as a whole. So you have to look also on the macro level when you discuss prostitution.
One of the major things that needs to be done to end human trafficking, specifically sex trafficking we're talking about now, is for men to understand that it is the demand for girls and women's bodies for prostitution purposes that is fueling sex trafficking. So they need to play a leadership role in ending that. They need in a way, and this is no small measure to say, they need in a way to take back their sexuality from the pornographers. I think of all the girls, I think of all the women, I think of them as my daughter, I think of them as my mother, I think of them as my sister, and we need to reach a point that all of us reach a point where we say no one should be for sale. Not my daughter, not your daughter, no one should be for sale. That there should not be a class of human beings that are available for sexual use and abuse for anyone. We shouldn't allow this to happen to anyone. They should all be seen as our daughters and our sisters and our relatives. They should all be seen as people that should not be available to be used in this way. That is the world that we are fighting for so that we no longer live with this disconnect that it's okay to do this to someone in the Philippines, that it's okay to do this to someone in Harlem, that it's okay to do this to anyone. We want to build a world, we are working to build a world where no one is sexually exploited or trafficked for forced labor. remind me that there is beauty in the world. When you spend your time fighting human trafficking and sex trafficking in particular, you're looking at some of the ugliest behavior that human beings have to offer. And so flowers are a constant source of inspiration for me and a reminder that there is beauty in the world. And one day that beauty that we see in flowers will characterize planet Earth, I believe when the world is characterized by social justice instead of social injustice.